Hello everyone and welcome to this fifth training exercise follow along video for LEAP, the Low Emissions Analysis Platform. My name is Charlie Heaps and I'm the developer of LEAP. In this video, my colleague Chris Malley of SEI's York Centre is going to take you through exercise five of the standard LEAP training exercises, which cover non-energy sector greenhouse gas emissions. As a reminder, you can get a PDF copy of the training exercises here at leap.sei.org training. In Leap, you can open the included Fredonia dataset and then use menu option area revert to version to see answer keys corresponding to the end of each section of the exercises. And many other training exercises and videos are available on the Leap YouTube channel at leap.sei.org slash YouTube. The YouTube channel includes all of the exercises one through five from the standard Leap training exercises. Over to you, Chris. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this step-by-step -step guide of LEAP training exercise five, including emissions from non-energy sources. While LEAP has historically been used for energy sector planning and for looking at emission assessments in the energy sector, it's also possible to analyze and to calculate historical and projections of emissions for non-energy sectors. We can add these in so that a model can cover a complete inventory of a country's emissions from all sectors within the LEAP interface. These non-energy sector sources include industrial processes and product use, include agriculture, forestry and other land use, waste, solvent use, among others. This exercise builds on the exercises one to four that cover energy sector modeling using the Fredonia example LEAP dataset. This exercise also uses a Excel spreadsheet of emissions of hydrofluorocarbons, which can also be obtained from the LEAP website. So make sure you have this Excel sheet before getting started. I'm using the Fredonian dataset that has been completed up to the end of exercise four. And now we're going to add in our non-energy sector emissions. In this exercise, we're going to expand the model of Fredonia to include total emissions of methane and nitrous oxide from livestock manure management in the agriculture sector. We're then also going to include hydrofluorocarbon HFC emissions from refrigeration and air conditioning, which is a subcategory of the industrial processes and product use IPCC source sector. We're then going to create a new scenario to show how biogas electricity from agricultural waste digester can be modeled in LEAP, which affects the emissions from both the energy sector, from power generation, as well as the non-energy sector emissions from agriculture. So let's begin in section 5.1, current accounts. We're going to begin by enabling both non-energy sector effect and complex effect options within settings. So we're going to click settings and we're going to select non-energy effects, which means look at non-energy sector emissions and complex effects, which allows us to look at a wider range of pollutant emissions and covers hydrofluorocarbons. So that's why we've selected that. We can then click close. Within the non-energy sector, we can build up a wide variety of branch structures to suit our analysis. In this analysis, we're going to use the same category names as outlined in the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC Emission Inventory Guidelines. And we're told in section 5.1 to add category branches to create our non-energy sector structure for industrial process and product use and for agriculture, forestry and other land use. I'm going to right click and click add. My first branch is going to be industrial processes and product use. And then underneath that, I'm going to include a branch for ozone depleting substances substitutes.
and that should have been a category branch. It's not a it's not a an effect branch, a pollutant or an emission branch, a category branch, and then a final subcategory of refrigeration and air conditioning. Ozone depleting substances substitutes like hydrofluorocarbons can be emitted from a range of sectors. We're just looking at refrigeration and air conditioning in this example. I'm then going back to my non-energy sector and clicking add again and adding in agriculture, forestry and other land um, uh, land use for the AFOLU category. And below that, I'm then adding a further branch for livestock emissions. And we have different um, subsectors within livestock that have emissions, enteric fermentation from livestock, animal housing. Um, here I'm looking at manure management only in this example analysis. OK, let's move on to section 5.1.1, HFCs from refrigeration and air conditioning. Fredonia's historical emissions of HFCs from the category 2F1, which covers refrigeration and air conditioning and HFC emissions, are contained in a Microsoft Excel sheet titled HFC emissions, which I showed previously. Under the refrigeration and air conditioning branch, we're going to use the add button to add eight branches to represent the emissions of different HFC compounds found in this work uh, workbook. So let's click add. We want to add an effect branch and I can find HFC 23. I can look HFC 23 from my list and then I click OK and it's been added to the list. So I now have all of my pollutants added in here. What we're told in the exercise is that regular audits of HFC emissions from refrigerators and air conditioners in Fredonia mean that there are annual inventories for these pollutants available all the way back until 2000. And this is an example of when we might have large amounts of historical data to enter it into LEAP for as many years as possible. So this is an opportunity to learn how to input a time series of data from Excel quickly and easily into LEAP. What this example shows us is sometimes we have an inventory of emissions that we want to enter directly into LEAP, as we have here for HFC emissions that have been calculated and derived in another program, in another piece of work. We want to enter it into LEAP. We also have um, multiple historical years from 2000 to 2010. And we could enter this using an interp function and write this in, but it would take a long time and it would be tedious, repetitive uh, work to do that. Instead, what we can do is copy this row of years and copy these numbers and paste this into leap copy and click paste. What LEAP then does is copy all of the values and put them in the correct format to create the expression in LEAP so that all of the data has been entered with one copy and paste um, um, process. For HFC 32, I can then just copy the line of, um, the line of um, emissions data for 2000 to 2010, right click and click paste, and Leap remembers the years from the previous copy and paste. So I don't need to copy the years again. So I can then repeat this, copying the emissions for each variable into the future, 
uh, uh, copy the emissions for each variable for historical years from 2000 to 2010 and put them into LEAP. So this makes it very efficient and easy to take data from a large Excel document and put it into LEAP in the correct format in an efficient way. So now I've entered all of that information into, um, into LEAP and it's put it in in the correct interp function. So I have all of my historical current accounts data entered for HFC emissions under the industrial processes and product use um, uh, uh, branch in LEAP. Let's move on now to emissions of methane and nitrous oxide from manure management under section 5.1.2. Under manure management, we're going to now add two effect branches representing the emissions of methane and nitrous oxide. So I'm going to right click and click add, and I'm going to select methane from my effects first, and then I'm going to right click and click add and select uh, nitrous oxide, N2O. We're told that in 2010, Fredonia's 65 million livestock consisted mainly of poultry, but also of a mixture of cattle, swine and other animals. Farms employed a number of different manure management practices, but on average, manure, animals, uh, uh, manure from these animals emitted 0.07 kilograms of methane and 0.1 kilograms of N2O per year for every head of livestock. In this exercise, the annual emissions of greenhouse gases can be calculated by multiplying the number of livestock by an emission factor. To do this multiplication in LEAP, to actually put in the calculation to estimate the emissions in LEAP, we can do this by creating a special user-defined variable to hold our data on the total number of livestock. To do this, we're going to follow the steps in section 5.1.2 and we're going to first click on our user variables manager from the analysis menu. We don't have any user variables that have been defined yet. We're going to add a new one. We're then asked to put in the variable name. So this variable is going to be livestock and it's going to be in units of head of livestock. And we can put in the notes, the number of livestock heads of all animal types. We then want to configure the visibility for this variable. The visibility tells us where the where we can enter values for this variable, where we can see this variable and enter values for the number of livestock. So we want to click on the visibility tab. The first thing that we can define in the visibility is whether we want to see it in different scenarios. And we do, we want to see it in current accounts and in our scenarios. We then want to look at the branch visibility where we can control where the variable appears in the tree. We want this variable to appear for non-energy sector categories. We want to be able to enter it in our livestock folder here. We want to then select that livestock folder as where we want to enter that variable. And we want it to be visible at the branch, but we don't want to enter it below the branch. We don't want to enter it from your management. We only need to enter it at that livestock branch. If we click OK and then click Close and I click on Livestock, we should be able to see our livestock branch here where we can then enter this data. So in current accounts, we had 65, 65 million head of animals. Now we want to say what are the emissions associated with those animals. We want to enter this under non-energy effect loading. 
So for methane, we are told in section 5.1.2 that each animal emits 0 0.07 kilograms of methane per year per animal. So to enter that, we want to enter an expression like 0 0.07 multiplied by, and then we want to refer to that livestock variable. So if I type non-energy and backslash, I then get the next part of my, my branch address. which is the agriculture, forestry, and other land use branch here, and then livestock. And then the variable is livestock. So now I have my livestock branch in head of animal, and I have my emissions calculated of methane, 0 0.07 times by the number of livestock. I can then do the same thing again, we're told in section 5.1.2 that the emissions of, um, of nitrous oxide are 0 0.1 multiplied by the, um, the head of uh, livestock. This time I'm going to enter this expression in builder to show another way to do it. I can put 0 0.1 again as my emission factor multiplied by, click on livestock and drag it over and click livestock. I then get the expression automatically entered. I don't need to type it out by just dragging over the livestock blinds, clicking and dragging it over. Now I have the same expression entered with the different emission factor for nitrous oxide. So let me there click save. We've now entered our calculation methods for the non-energy sectors for our current accounts. Let's move on now to section 5.2 the baseline scenario, where we're going to include two simple assumptions to relate changes in our non-energy sector emissions to the key assumptions which we've already created. Refrigeration and air conditioning are expect activities are expected to increase with rising incomes. As people get richer, they are more able to afford refrigerators and air conditioners. So HFC emissions from refrigeration and air conditioning will grow at the same rate as our income variable. So to do that, under key assumptions, we have our income variable entered here already. And in the baseline scenario, it grows at 3.5%, which we entered in exercise one. Under industrial process emissions, ODS substitutes and refrigeration, we then have our non-energy effect loading here. And rather than entering 3.5%, which we could as our growth rate, we're going to enter the expression growth as key backslash and then income. And that means that our HFC 23 growth rate is the same as our income variable. If I then press Control D, it provides an efficient way of copying this expression for all the other hydrofluorocarbons that are emitted, it copies the expression above into this expression box. So now all HFCs are following the same assumption about the baseline projection that it's going to grow at the same rate as income. For livestock, we're told that if the diet of people in Fredonia does not change, then the number of livestock head can be expected to increase at the same rate as the national population. So for the livestock variable, we're going to enter an expression that increases the number of livestock at the same rate as population. So now I'm going to go to my livestock variable and I'm going to again use the growth as expression. But now I'm going to associate it with my population variable under key assumptions. We can see here that this then grows at the same rate as population. So we've now created that baseline expression. In section 5.2.1, we can then view the results. So I'm going to click save first, and then I'm going to click on results. And I'm going to click on Fredonia new at the top here to be able to look at my emissions. In section 5.2.1, the graph that we have is for emissions of 
greenhouse gases in our baseline scenario using the 100-year global warming potential. And it's split by demand, transformation, and non-energy. So let's do the same. We want to select environment to look at our emissions and 100-year global warming potential. We then get our greenhouse gas emissions from 2010 up to 2040 split into demand, transformation, and non-energy. If I click on non-energy, I get just the emissions from the non-energy sector. When I look at my non-energy sector emissions, I find that most of the emissions, the majority are coming from agriculture, forestry, and other land use. And I've got very little from industrial processes. Whereas in my section 5.2.1, most of the emissions come from methane and nitrous oxide from the agriculture sector, but there are still emissions associated with HFCs. So this is an example of where looking at the results might highlight where we've made a mistake. So if I go back to analysis and look at my HFC emissions, what I find is that I've used the incorrect unit. The emissions here were in units of tons, whereas the emissions here were in units of kilograms. So I can now change the units here to correct the mistake that I made when entering that, that data that I identified when I looked at the results because it didn't look correct. So I'm going to change all of this to tons. If I then click on results again and I look at my non-energy sector, now I see something that is much more consistent with what we see in the exercise. The yellow and the green here is from agriculture and then the rest of the HFC emissions. And here we see a similar separation between agriculture and between industrial process emissions. So I'm confident that now everything is correct for my current accounts and my baseline scenario. Let's move on now to section 5.3, the policy scenario of looking at pa uh, generating electricity from uh, digesting animal waste. To develop a source of natural fertilizer and to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, the government of Fredonia is evaluating a small power plant project to consume methane-rich biogas to produce electricity. So this will have an effect on our emissions from the livestock sector and from electricity generation. To represent this policy, we're now going to first add a new process to the electricity generation module. So we have our processes here. I'm going to right click and click add. My feedstock fuel for this process is biogas, and the name is animal waste digestion. And we're told that the technical and cost parameters are given in the table below, and all other parameters should be left as their default values. Feedstock fuel is biogas. The dispatch rule is full capacity. So I want to run this to its full capacity. The process efficiency is 30%. And the maximum availability is 85%. The capital cost of this project is $5,800 per kilowatt hour, which is $5,000, million per kilowatt hour in units of dollar per megawatt of production capacity. The variable O&M cost is $5 per megawatt hour, and the fixed O&M cost is $150 per kilowatt hour, so $150,000 per megawatt of capacity. We're also going to add a set of emission factors for the combustion of biogas. We're going to add effect branches and add each of the pollutants that is described below with the emission factors that are included for them. So underneath the biogas feedstock fuel, we're going to add an emission factor for carbon dioxide biogenic. We're going to add a effect for carbon monoxide. We're going to add an effect for methane. We're going to add an effect for non-methane volatile organic compounds for nitrogen oxides, for nitrous oxide, and for sulfur dioxide. And the units of the emission factors are kilograms per terajoule. 
So I'm going to change the emission factor unit for carbon dioxide to kilogram per terajoule and enter in the value for each. So we've entered the properties of this animal waste digestion electricity generation project. We now need to create the scenario where it comes online. So we're going to visit the scenarios button here and we're going to add a new scenario called animal waste digestion, which is inherits from the baseline. So I'm going to click close and there are two things that will happen in the baseline. The first is that the animal waste digestion plant will cons be constructed. It will be a 30 megawatt pilot project biogas generator and that's expected to be completed by 2021. So I'm going to go to this scenario, animal waste digestion, and this is an increase in electricity generation capacity that is planned. It has a timeline for it. That type of capacity is entered under exogenous capacity. So here I'm going to enter a step function that says 2021, we will add 30 megawatts of capacity with our pilot biogas digester project. The second thing that we're told is that for each gigajoule of energy that the biogas digester consumes, 1.14 kilograms of methane and 1.39 kilograms of nitrous oxide emissions are avoided annually from manure management. So by that, the, by the manure being used to generate electricity, we avoid a certain amount of methane and nitrous oxide emissions that is linked to the amount of energy that is generated from that biodigester. So we've added in the biodigester coming on, on online. What we need to do now is to adjust our expressions for methane and nitrous oxide emissions to reflect the amount of emissions that will be reduced from that waste digester coming online. So to do that, I'm going to go to the Builder tab and I'm going to enter an expression in the animal waste digestion scenario that says we want the emissions to be the same as the baseline value, but minus 1.14 kilograms of methane times the amount of energy that the biogas digester consumes. So to write that, we write transformation, electricity generation, processes, and then our animal waste digester, and then our inputs. We want those inputs to be in gigajoules. What this expression is saying is that we have the baseline value of emissions that we had entered in the baseline, which was the number of head of, of animals times by an emission factor. So that value minus the amount of inputs, the amount of energy input into biogas digestion times 1.14. That's the amount of avoided emissions. So then we click submit and we can enter this similar expression for nitrous oxide. So I'm going to press Control D to get the same expression. I'm just going to change that to 1.39 because that's the amount, the number of kilograms of nitrous oxide emissions avoided per gigajoule of energy that the biogas digester consumes. So let's now click Save and move on to section 5.3.1, Viewing Results. If we've set up our model correctly, we should be able to use the results view to show the emission reduction from the two parts of our tree, from the electricity generation sector and from manure management. So in the exercise here, what it shows us is that we should be able to see the avoided emissions of greenhouse gases in the animal waste digestion scenario. So we have our total emissions and the small white portion at the top shows the reduction in emissions from implementing this scenario. So let's click on results and see if we can see that reduction. So I go back to Fredonia New. I'm going to change my levels down to one to get demand, transformation and non-energy like we have in the exercise. And then the scenario I want to look at is animal waste digestion. I'm looking at the results as what is avoided versus the baseline. And we can see we have our avoided emissions at the top here. 
we have the amount of emissions avoided in total in Fredonia from implementing the animal waste digestion scenario. If I click on transformation, I see the change in emissions in electricity generation, which is pretty small. If I click on non-energy, I see the uh, resulting reduction in emissions from the agriculture sector, which is where the majority of the emission reductions are occurring. So this is how we can incorporate non-energy sector emissions in LEAP and look at emission reduction scenarios in the non-energy sectors. I hope this has been useful. Good luck with implementing your own non-energy sector analyses in LEAP and thank you very much for watching.